You might think you're watching an educational channel where I explain fascinating concepts in space and astronomy, but that's not really what's going on here. What's actually happening is that you're tagging along as I learn more and more about new and cool things happening in the universe. I dig into these ideas like a badger hiding a cow carcass, and then we all get to enjoy the cache of knowledge I uncover. Okay, that analogy got a little weird. Have you seen that video of the badger hiding the cow? Super cool. Anyway, my point is, fast radio bursts are the new cosmic what's-its, confusing and baffling astronomers. And now we get to take a front seat and watch them move through all stages of the process of discovery. Stage one, a strange new anomaly is discovered that doesn't fit any current model of the cosmos. For example, strange Boyajian star. You know, that star that probably doesn't have an alien megastructure orbiting around it, but astronomers can't rule out that just yet. Stage two, astronomers struggle to find other examples of this thing. They pitch ideas for new missions and scientific instruments. No idea is too crazy until it's proven to be too crazy. Examples include dark matter, dark energy, supersymmetry. Stage three, astronomers develop a model for the thing, find evidence that matches their predictions, and the vast majority of the astronomical community comes to a consensus on what this thing is, like quasars and gamma ray bursts. YouTubers make their videos, textbooks are updated, balance is restored. Today, we're going to talk about fast radio bursts, and they just move from stage one to stage two. Let's dig in. Fast radio bursts, or FRBs, or Furbies, were first detected in 2007 by the astronomer Duncan Lorimer from West Virginia University. He was looking through an archive of pulsar observations, Pulsars, of course, are newly formed neutron stars, the remnants left over from supernova explosions. They spin rapidly, blasting out twin beams of radiation. Some can spin hundreds of times a second, so precisely you could set your watch to them. And in this data, Lorimer made a that's funny observation when he noticed one blast of radio waves that squealed for five milliseconds and then it was gone. And it didn't match any other observation or prediction of what should be out there, so astronomers set out to find more of them. Over the last 10 years, astronomers have found about 25 more examples of fast radio bursts. Each one only lasts a few milliseconds and then fades away forever. A one-time event that can appear anywhere in the sky and only lasts for a couple of milliseconds and never repeats is not an astronomer's favorite target of study. Actually, one FRB has been found to repeat. Maybe. The question is, of course, what are they? And the answer right now is, astronomers have no idea. In fact, until very recently, astronomers weren't even certain they were coming from space at all. We're surrounded by radio signals all the time, so a terrestrial source of fast radio bursts seems totally logical. About a week ago, astronomers from Australia announced that FRBs are definitely coming from outside the Earth. They used the Molongo Observatory Synthesis Telescope, or MOST, in Canberra to gather data on a large patch of sky. And then they sifted through a thousand terabytes of data and found just three fast radio bursts. Three. Since MOST is far sighted, and can't perceive any radio signals closer than 10,000 kilometers away, the signals had to be coming from outside planet Earth. They were extraterrestrial in origin. Right now, fast radio bursts are infuriating to astronomers. They don't seem to match up with any other events we can see. They're not the afterglow of a supernova or tied in some way to gamma ray bursts. In order to really figure out what's going on, astronomers need new tools, and there's a perfect instrument coming. Astronomers are building a new telescope called the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, or CHIME, which is under construction near the town of Penticton in my own British Columbia. Looks like a bunch of snowboard half pipes, and its job will be to search for hydrogen emission from distant galaxies. 
They'll help us understand how the universe was expanding between 7 and 11 billion years ago and create a three-dimensional map of the early cosmos. And in addition to this, it's going to be able to detect hundreds of fast radio bursts, maybe even a dozen a day, finally giving astronomers vast pools of signals to study. And after the break, I'm going to run through the exotic ideas that could be causing fast radio bursts, including an awesome idea for an alien propulsion system. But first, I'd like to thank some very special patrons. These people have been supporting us since December 2013. Cole Palmer, Michael Friedman, Bill Christian, Dennis Robertson, Craig Landon, Marco Jovanovic, John Gallant, and Helga Bierkog. Thank you for over three years of support. I couldn't do this without you. And the rest of our 699 patrons for their generous support. If you love what we're doing and you want to help out, head over to patreon.com slash universe today. And once again, this episode of The Guide to Space is sponsored by the dot space domain name. Remember when you wanted to make a website and had to spend a whole night brainstorming domain name after domain name and everything was taken and you had to misspell words or just invent new words entirely just to get a domain name that was available? Well, those dark days are over and now you can get a domain name that matches your interests at a reasonable price, like dot .space. Go to www.launch.space, use the offer code guide to space, and you can get your own dot .space domain for only $2.99 instead of the usual $9.99. Thanks again to Dot Space for sponsoring this episode. Now, back to the show. Fast radio bursts, what are they? Astronomers have no idea. Seriously, if you've got a good suggestion, they'd be glad to hear it. In these kinds of situations, astronomers generally assume they're caused by exploding stars in some way. Young stars, or old stars, or maybe stars colliding. But so far, none of the theoretical models match the observations. Another idea is black holes, of course, specifically supermassive black holes at the hearts of distant galaxies. From time to time, a random star, planet, or blob of gas falls into the black hole. This matter piles upon the black hole's event horizon, heats up, screams for a moment, and then disappears without a trace. Not a full-on quasar that shines for thousands of years, but a quick snack. The next idea comes with the only repeating fast radio burst that's ever been found. Astronomers looked through the data archive of the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico and found a signal that had repeated at least 10 times in a year, sometimes less than a minute apart. Since the quick blast of radiation is repeating, this rules out a one-time collision between exotic objects like neutron stars. Instead, there could be a new class of magnetars, which are already a new class of neutron stars, that could release these occasional shrieks of radio. Or maybe this repeating object is totally different from the single events that have been discovered so far. They have no idea. Now here's my favorite idea, and honestly, this one is the least realistic. What I'm about to say is almost certainly not what's going on, and yet, can't be ruled out so far. And that's good enough for my fertile imagination. Abby Loeb and Mansavi Lingham at Harvard University said the following about FRBs. Fast radio bursts are exceedingly bright given their short duration and origin at distances, and we haven't identified a possible natural source with any confidence. An artificial origin is worth contemplating and checking. Artificial origin, so aliens. Nice. Loeb and Lingham calculated how difficult it would be to send a signal that strong that far across the universe. They found that you'd need to build a solar array with twice the surface area of Earth to power the radio wave transmitter. And what would you do with the transmission of radio or microwaves that strong? You'd use it to power a spacecraft, of course. What we're seeing here on Earth is just the momentary flash as a propulsion beam sweeps past the solar system like a lighthouse. But in reality, this huge solar array would be firing out a constant beam of radiation that would propel a massive starship to tremendous speeds. Like the breakthrough Starshot spacecraft, but for million ton spaceships. In other words, we could be witnessing alien transportation systems, pushing spacecraft with beams of energy to other worlds. 
And I know that's probably not what's happening. It's not aliens, it's never aliens. But in my mind, it's what I'm imagining. So kick back and enjoy the ride. Join us as we watch astronomers struggle to understand what fast radio bursts are, as they invalidate theories and slowly unlock one of the most thrilling mysteries in modern astronomy. And as soon as they figure it out, I'll let you know all about it. So what do you think? Which explanation for fast radio bursts seems the most logical to you? I'd love to hear your thoughts and wild speculation in the comments. In our next episode, we're going to take spacecraft reusability to the next step, single stage to orbit. I'm talking about a rocket that takes off, delivers a payload into orbit, and then lands again. Is this possible? Is it even a good idea? The mystery of fast radio bursts is similar to the mystery of magnetars. We kind of know what they are now, but they didn't give up their secrets easily. Here's a video that talks all about them. Like the breakthrough Starship spacecraft? Mm.